Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 14. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 14 I was flying through the clouds. I felt light. The city was right beneath me. It looked like Boston, but it was not. It was calm, perfect and harmonious. Right above me was the deep blue firmament, enchanting my eyes and penetrating in my eyesight. I could hear him call me. I heard my name being gently called out as if by a heavenly choir, Joseph. I tried to move up in an attempt to see it, but I didn't make it. Something below me kept me right in the middle, which just enabled me to observe the two sides. I tried to move further up again and at this time I was pulled down. It felt as though as if I was falling and then I was suddenly back at Oles Park again. My feeling of fear immediately came up to the surface. Then the soft voice began to get louder and louder. She continued to say my name, however, she was screaming to the top of her lungs now. I never felt so frightened just by hearing my own name. Someone was crying out loud for being in such intense pain, and that was cutting through my very soul. I then opened my eyes. It had just woken up from a nightmare. I was back in my airplane seat again. Normality had been restored. I was on my way to Sydney, Australia. The nightmare itself woke me up me as if I had reached its bearing limit. I was feeling well enough to go through with that till the very end. At that moment, I remembered again what Donnie asked me in my last dream, would I go through with that until the end? It looks like that. I'd already been traveling for eight hours. They say that Australia is on the other side of the world, which seems incoherent to me since the earth is round. But it really felt as if I was crossing through the world, and I wasn't even sure what for. The University of Columbia invited me to study, evaluate and present a report regarding a paranormal phenomenon that was happening in a certain region of Australia. The Department of Parapsychology at Harvard had appointed me and, due to the partnership agreement I had signed with Harvard, I was supposed to help them whenever they needed me. Therefore I had no choice. I could have refused to go, yet, the university would look at me in a very different way. They wouldn't see me as a brilliant student anymore, but as a traitor. But I would not refuse such offer anyways. They said that project was the equivalent to three semester of coursework, but the report would have to focus mostly on the scientific factors that would make a parallel among the studies at the universities of Columbia, Harvard and Melbourne, which was the departing station from where I'd leave for the research center with a group of other scientists. I confess that I felt very flattered with such invitation, although I imagine they didn't really know what they were doing when they decided to make me coordinator of that project. It was sort of like a test. Many knew about my psychic powers, which is what the spiritualists call mediumism, but they didn't know up to what point that could affect my scientific judgment. It was an opportunity of me get away from Harvard for a while and see how far I was able to go with my powers. That was also an opportunity one had to make them realize I was not joking. Ever since the release of my book, the directions were altered and now I was faced with the very first set of crossroads. Which way should I turn? I landed at Sydney's airport, but I still had wait another hour before catching the plane to Melbourne. I sat in the lobby by the boarding gates as I waited for my next flight. I was very tired. However, at a certain point, I realized I was far away and in a foreign country. I looked at the faces of those who were passing by but didn't see a lot of difference. Perhaps that was due to having the same Anglo-Saxon origin. Maybe that is what binds us together, society, not politics. I remembered my farewell moment. It was different from the time I left for Germany. It was the same group of six people. Everybody was the same except for and that got fatter every day. The other five remained the same. Mom hugged me. Dad gave me a handshake. Eddie also shook hands with me and then said, I just knew that you would go far, Joe. But I did not figure you'd go this far. Everybody laughed and so did I yet I no longer found his jokes funny. In fact, I even felt bad because of that. Rana kissed me on the cheek. She meant to say something but sensed certain hardness in my facial expression and stepped back. Wayne shook my hand and said something about kangaroos. I don't remember exactly what that was. I think his ignorance itself was enough to get me irritated. Annan just hugged me. Her image of a mother-to-be stopped her from making any malicious comments, which was better for everyone. However, the problem lied within myself. I wouldn't feel touched with anything they did or said anymore. Having come into contact with so many strong feelings, and even solid ones that emanated from the spirits, altered my ability to feel moved by the sentiments of the living. 
It seemed as if purity had filtered it all. I tried to analyze myself. While I was sitting in that airport lobby, which was full of people I did not know, I stopped and thought, do I miss anyone? But I had no answer to that question. I got a little sad. I realized I had changed and could not expect people who loved me to trip along with me. I didn't want to back up. I had to move forward through the very end. I just hoped they realized that I still loved them but needed to follow my own path alone. American Airlines Flight Number 7245 to Melbourne now boarding at Gate 2. Perhaps the highway starts here. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.